Hello everyone and welcome to another LS Dyna tutorial. Today's video is going to be a simple one so I hope everyone can follow. So the other day I was watching this video about understanding torsion and I learned something new and I wanted to check whether I can get a similar result using the LS Dyna simulation or not. So let's not waste any more time and get to business. The first simulation in this video I will use the meter and kilogram and second units. So when we go to mesh, we want to make a solid cylinder. So this is the radius, going to be 0 0.05 and the length going to be 0 0.5 and number of elements going to be 40 and here also 40 and it's going to be in the x direction. Okay, so accept. So this we have our mesh here. So this number 40 here controls the element size in this direction, in the radial direction. And this 40 controls the number of elements in this longitudinal direction. And if you're using LS prepost uh, that is uh, new, not the old versions, you have this option and this option of controlling the elements in the radial direction in more different ways. So let's say I put here and here, and then I create, you can see the difference in the elements here. You can see how it changes from our original mesh. Okay, so don't want that. Delete and also delete. Reject. Okay, one more thing that I want to mention here is this number. Okay, so this number controls the radial direction, and if you want the mesh to be nice like this, make sure it is a multiple of four. So let's say if it is 14, which is not a multiple of 4, you see the mesh is not very nice, it's not symmetric. So if it is like 16, which is a multiple of 4, you see it's symmetric. Let's say if it is 20, also symmetric. If it is 24, it's also symmetric. This is useful if you want to, let's say, only have half solid mesh cylinder. So you can mesh the whole cylinder and then delete half of it easily. Okay, so this is our cylinder and we're gonna, or this is our shaft, and we're gonna apply our torsion on this guy. So I want to go to element tools and move copy. So I want to change these two ends to rigid parts and then apply the constraint or the boundary conditions on them. Part number two, and then I click on the top view. And here I would say, I select this top elements and I would say fixed or rotating end, then apply. Accept. And I do the same here. I put it number three and then I say fixed and okay. Now I can apply the boundary conditions on these two uh, part, part number two and part number three. And this part number one will just follow because it's uh, attached to them. This method also is uh, useful if you want to apply if you want to do a compression test or a tensile test. Okay, so now we go to model keyword. Okay, now we not want to define the keyword one by one. So first we have boundary prescribed motion rigid. New ID, so I would say rotating, rotating, and so part ID number two, and then degree of freedom should be five because it will rotate around the X axis. Uh, VAD, we want to apply displacement. In our case, it's a radial displacement. So 
it will be the angle of twist. Here the load curve ID, I don't have, I did not define yet, so I can define from here. Curve, then I would say angle of twist. New. Okay, when times zero, the angle of twist is zero. And let's say our simulation will run until insert first. Let's say our simulation will run until 10 seconds. So at 10, uh, let's say this guy gonna be 3.141593. And then insert, accept, then accept, then done. Now I go to the curve, I check my curve again, define curve, so I have this curve, okay, so I want now to extend the time here a bit, let's say 10.1 1 seconds, and then insert, then accept, alright, because our simulation, I want the simulation to finish at 10, so the displacement or the boundary condition should not stop at the termination time itself okay so and then one more thing i want to multiply this by two except so the maximum rotation or the maximum angle of twist will be two pi which is one full rotation now what else we have to do Let's click on all, and then I have, of course, I have the database, P3 plot, and then here 0 0.1, and then I have control termination, 10 seconds, set. Okay, now I want to define the section, solid, ejection. Okay, now the element formulation. Now instead of using the default, I want to use minus 2, which is a higher order element, then accept. Done. Now after defining the section, we define the material. Okay, so this material gonna be number 15, Johnson Cook, and it will be aluminium. Okay, our units are meter, kilogram, and seconds, so this one should be 2700, this one 2 point, 2 point, uh, or this one should be 26.9 gigapascal, this one is 70. 70 gigapascal Ocean ratio 0 0.33 this is 0, 0, 0. this a is 1.67 e power of 8 this one 5.96 e power of 8 it is 0 0.551 this one 0 0.001 the melt this m is 0 0.859 Melting temperature is 893 in the room. Temperature is 300. This or this temperature in absolute and the reference strain rate is 1. This is 910 and this is minus 1.5 e power of 9. And in order to define the failure with the Johnson Cook material, we need to define these damage parameters. So this is 0 0.0261, this is 0 0.263, this is minus 0 0.349, and 0 0.247. This one is 16.8, and this is 2 for the strain rate parameter, and then we accept. Alright, now we go to rigid. New. So here is rotating end. It's made out of the same material. So this one 70 e power of 9, 0 0.33. This rotating end will be able to rotate and it will be fixed in all other degree of freedoms. So we say it's fix, 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 meaning fix in the translational degree of freedom. But around X is free to rotate, and around Y and Z, 
is fixed and not allowed to rotate. Then accept. And here I have fixed and new. Here this fixed end will be fixed, meaning it will not be rotating, but it will be allowed to translate around X because if we rotate this one it will it will have the tendency to go also in the radial direction so i don't want to put the constraint in the radial direction because i want this problem to be a pure torsion problem okay after this we just link the guys together let's say this is shaft section id and here aluminium except rotating end to and fix end and done okay this section i may want to rename it to avoid confusion is not so a rigid section is solid section except okay so now i'm using material johnson cook with solid elements so if this is the case then i need to define an equation of state otherwise it will give you an error so we go to eos equation of state and then we use the linear polynomial equation of state in this equation of state everything will be zero except c1 it will be equal to the bulk modulus of the material okay which is roughly 68 gigapascal for aluminium so, so now that we have defined it we should not forget to link it here accept and, and save so here i want to save in the desktop option aluminium here aluminium then save okay now that i saved it i go to here the termination time i put it 10 seconds and 10 seconds is a very long time for LS Dyna. So as you can see, this simulation will take like forever despite the file being relatively small size. So as I was saying, it looks like it will take forever. Control C, SW2, 500 hours, which is still very, very long time for a small problem. So SW1, and I close it, I terminate it. So to tackle this problem, I can do either mass scaling or time scaling. Time scaling is when you increase the rate of the displacement and mass scaling, as the name suggests, by increasing the mass. And it is done by control time step and you define this one time step size for mass scale solution so basically if you increase the mass the time scale uh, sorry the time step will be bigger and thus the running time will reduce but instead of using this uh, way i want to use another way which is manually increasing the mass of each part since our simulation is small and we have only three parts and three materials so we can easily do that so material Johnson Cook, this, this is 2.7 e to the 3. This is 2.7 e to the power of 3. I want to change it to 2.7 e power of 9. 2.7 e power of 9. So I multiply the density by like uh, 1 million. And here, the same thing. And here also, the same thing. And then save. Okay, now I try to rerun and see what happens from the initial estimate of uh, 5000 hours or 2000 hours something like that now it becomes only one hour and if i say control c sw2 see it will take 26 minutes but i believe actually it will take even less than that so regarding the mass scaling here what i was trying to say before the time step is related to element size divided by speed of sound or sound speed we did not change the element size so we change here the density 
So when we change the density, the material speed of sound will be smaller. So when this value is smaller, the time step will be bigger. Now, as you can see, it will take 26 minutes. Control SW2. Just want to just want to see if things are going fine or not. Yeah, so far so good, and you can see this guy is rotating. So now we just have to look at this and wait. So instead of waiting 22 minutes for me, from my side, I will show you the results of the same exact simulation that I did before. So I think this is the one. Okay, so if we play, you see it will rotate, rotate, and at the end it will rupture. Yeah. So you can see here the rupture happen in a straight line like this and uh, you check what you want to check here the first thing is history art or global also can kinetic energy and total energy and then you plot so you can see here the total energy is increasing and in very high and the kinetic energy is still very low as long as the kinetic energy is less than 10 percent of the total energy then it would be fine after the rupture the system will be less stable thus we have this some sort of vibration okay so now we are done with our first simulation and the second one will be a really fast one so i have this the same keyword now I want to use different material and aluminium was a ductile material here I want to use a printed material and it will be granite so this granite is some sort of rock and I know we don't do torsion tests on rocks but in my videos you can do whatever you want okay so now we just need to define the material so the material will be to scroll down until 100 something and then we reach this one yes 110 johnson home squeeze then new id will be material number four and this is granite okay so this is seven 2.7 a minus six and this is 21.1 gigapascal this one one you see is 0 0.0087 0 0.88 0 0.2 this strain is 2.59 e minus 8. Okay, this tensile strength is 0 0.054. This one is 0 0.25. This is 9.2. This is 5.2. Beta is 0, and this is 0 0.09, 0 0.3. This d1, d2, you can say it's equivalent to d1, d2, d3, d4 in the Johnson Cook material, meaning you need to define this one in order to define the value. This is 45.8, here is 0, 0, and this minus 1. Then accept. Okay, if you noticed here, I'm using kilogram millimeter, and here is in gigapascal. And the reason behind that because this material properties of granite I took from this paper okay, by this guy. You should know his name already. And the material properties are listed here. And uh, instead of changing the material properties, I don't want to do that. I want to change the model itself. So here I accept. And then I need to change this mesh from meter to millimeter. I go to element tools and I go to transform and then I scale. Scale in all direction and the origin is 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0.0000 should be fine. And the scale factor should be 1000. And then click on everything and then scale up. Everything will be huge now. So remember the length, how much we defined it. It was 
0 0.5 I think now it become 500 if, so from 0 0.5 meter become 500 millimeter so now we are done with the units or we are done with the geometry now we need to update this one the termination time so we change the 10 second to 1000 millisecond which is equivalent to one second i don't need 10 seconds here because this is a brittle material and the fracture will be uh, will happen earlier so i change the termination time i need to change the, this one also so here it will be 10 and then need to assign our new material so material number four and it doesn't need equation of state all right now we need to change also this rigid material but first of all we want to do the mass scaling also instead of 2.7 e power of minus 6 i would say 0 0.27 and then accept so here also i would say 0 0.27 this is after the mass scaling of course and this e should be 70 gigapascal and here also the same 0 0.27 and here only 70 because we are using kilogram and millimeters now then accept there is one more thing that we did not modify which is our boundary condition or our rotation so here i need to define or i need to change or modify or update this curve the curve of angle of twist so now our time is in milliseconds so this one I multiply by 1000 except and also this rotation is actually too much for brittle material so this one I, I could say is equal to 0 0.025 then accept then save now control s save I copy this and then I run it. and then I run it and see and it will take only nine minutes so I hope I did not do anything wrong here control C is W02 yeah it will take less than 10 minutes okay while waiting for that to show the two material models that we use today okay, this is the Johnson cook for the aluminium if you remember we define A and B and N and P Okay, so this is our the definition of these guys. We also define CP and the initial volume. So these are the properties if you want to define using Johnson Cook. And this is the relation or the flow stress. And when it comes to the damage and the fracture, this is the equation. So you need, as I said, you need to define D1, D2, and D3, and all these guys. And the uh, fracture strain will be either this one or if I mean we also define this one so it will take either the maximum of this one or this one as the failure strain and when it comes to the granite material model we used 110 and this is the relation the equivalent stress and these are the definition of all the other guys you can read all this in the theory manual okay I'm not sure if it's working fine because I think the failure is happening too early. So I could say SW2, SW1. So maybe I need to even reduce the rotation. Maybe the rotation is too much. Yeah, I think the rotation is actually too much. But I get what I want. What I want actually is the failure of the brittle material. So you can see here. The failure happens in uh, 45 degrees, while the failure in this guy happens in a straight line. Okay, so I want to go to history, art, then total energy and kinetic energy of this guy. And you see here, the kinetic energy is, I think, more than 10%. That's why I, that's why I say the torsion is too much. But uh, I think to correct that one, you need to correct this curve and the reason why this curve is not actually correct because our time is only until one milliseconds but the curve is actually until 10,000 milliseconds 
So here, maybe I multiply by only 100, I think. Yeah, I should only multiply by 100. And if I do that, then my, not this one, my kinetic energy here will be less. Okay, so this is the failure of the brittle material. And this is the failure of the ductile material. Okay, if this one is very rough, then I already have the result here with a fine mesh. Okay, this is actually using uh, any desk software and I'm connecting to another PC workstation. So I'm not sure if you can see, see it clearly or not. So this is for the aluminum for a fine mesh. Still you see we get a straight line for for the failure and here for the granite or the brittle material you can see we get failure occurs at a 45 degrees okay so this is actually what i want which is the failure of the ductile material versus the failure of the brittle material and here is actually the video that i was referring to in the beginning of my tutorial so let's watch together if we have two it. bars, one made of a ductile material and one made of a brittle material, and, and we apply the same torque to both bars, we will observe that they fail differently. The ductile bar fails at an angle perpendicular to its axis, but the brittle bar fails at a 45 degree angle to its axis. We can explain this by remembering that ductile materials tend to fail in shear, and so fracture along the plane of maximum shear stress but brittle materials are weaker in tension than in shear, and so tend to fracture along the plane of maximum tensile stress. Yes, as you can see in this fellow, this all happens in a 45. So that's all for today. Thank you very much. I hope you learned something, and don't forget to like and subscribe. See you next time.